The way we're viewing uh, healthcare reform is as an opportunity to provide greater access to care, but more importantly, pre greater preventative care. And of course, so much of the preventative care takes place in the office-based setting, whether it's in the dental office or in the physician office. And we think that providing further access to preventative care will be, of course, good for public policy, good for the nation's health, but will also, in the end of the day, be a way to reduce the health care cost because diseases will be treated before they become acute. And therefore, this health care reform notion of access to care and greater care on the preventative side in the practitioner's office is, of course, good for the nation and we believe good for Henry Schein. It's a very interesting question. Of course, the constituents that we primarily deal with are the office-based practitioners. We're doing business with about a million dentists, physicians, and companion animal veterinarians. The challenge is how to uh, find ways for our customers, the office-based practitioners, to interface with the population. And in this particular instance, you're talking about the U.S. population. So through our social outreach programs, we've developed a number of initiatives that enable our practitioner customers to actually interface with the office-based practitioner. We have the elder care program, which uh, provides dental practitioners with an opportunity to provide health care to the elderly. This program finds ways to attract the elderly to come into the office-based setting, into the dentist's office, and in that context uh, we provide care. Uh, not us, but our customers provide care. Likewise, the Give, uh, the Back to uh, the Give Kids a Smile program. This is a program where uh, on a given weekend uh, about 15,000 dentists together with a, a larger number of uh, auxiliaries are providing free dental care to about a half a million uh, disadvantaged children who otherwise would not have access to dental care. And here again we find ways to go to the communities, attract these patients to come into the uh, 2,000 sites where the American Dental Association is working with Henry Schein and some other suppliers to provide uh, oral care through its membership. So it's about going into the community, attracting attention on the importance of oral care, and then of course delivering free care. Likewise, we have a program called Healthy Children, Healthy, Healthy Lifestyles. This is a program where we work with community health care centers throughout the country. Again, getting the word out that it's good to have your blood pressure checked, good to uh, have your EKG, etc., etc., and at the same time providing access to that care uh, at no charge to the community. Well, here's an interesting thought. Uh, somewhere around 2040, 50% of Americans will trace their roots to the developing world. So the majority of Americans will be this from the so-called minority group. We are not geared in this country to providing health care to people from, different, from this diversity of culture. Of course, there are many health care practitioners that can uh, comfortably provide uh, health care services to people from the developing world, from different cultures, but they're not enough. So one of the key component parts of our Henry Schein Cares program, that's our social outreach program, is to work with health care uh, workers and in our case, it's uh, dentists, uh, dental auxiliaries, and uh, office-based healthcare practitioners in uh, uh, education uh, in the area of cultural competency. So this has become a very, very important part of the Henry Schein Cares Program. And we are very, very concerned that as America moves more and more towards the minorities being in the majority, that our healthcare system is not culturally competent enough to deal with these needs. Oral care is very, very important in the overall health and well-being of an individual. Without good oral care, you can't live a good life, and you certainly will be more and more in the, in the hospital and certainly die younger. So it's very, very important for the overall health care environment to support oral care coverage. And uh, if, in the end of the day, health care is more efficient, and healthcare being more efficient, more productive, requires programs with significant emphasis on uh, the electronic medical record, a lot more preventative. We will, if all of this is implemented properly, we'll save a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And we will be able to then afford oral care for uh, the citizens. To reallocate those Yes, funds. 
correctly, there will be an opportunity to reallocate funds. And that, in a turn, it's a circle, will result in healthier people, less visits to uh, the hospital, because people will be taken care of in the preventative setting rather than in the hospital setting. And that's all good, again, for public policy. It's good for the health of the nation. And it's less expensive. And that's what we need to focus. And to boot, actually, there are a number of organizations in this country that for profit that are doing a very good job at providing quality care to Medicaid patients and making a profit. So it can be done. Well, I, I wouldn't want to get into politics because the application of what we just discussed ultimately then becomes a political decision. But I don't think there are healthcare practitioners that would agree that would disagree with everyone in this country having access to care, everyone in this country having access to preventative care, and everyone in this country being treated when they have an issue in oral care. The question is how to apply that. And uh, I, I think there are enough uh, 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 dentists that care about the, the population of this country to find the right solution with the political establishment. Well, healthcare is very, very complex. There's just no question about it. And no one sector of the constituency that serves oral care in particular can deal with this. So public-private partnerships are the solution combination of working with government, which has the authority, but government doesn't have the capacity, the NGO world, which has uh, the ability to do the right thing for society, but doesn't have the funding nor the authority, combining that with academia, and academia, uh, as a former uh, dean of a dental school, you know academia can do things. It doesn't have the legal muscle, doesn't have the resources, but can do things. And combining that with, of course, industry, is a way to drive change. And so if one combines the NGOs, the, uh, 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 the government, with the profession, with academia, and with industry, industry has the ability to get things done, but doesn't have either the moral uh, uh, platform, nor the legislation, nor the education. So this combination of the public-private partnership at the end of the day is the only way the healthcare issue will be resolved.